Welcome back. We're here with MTM and Velocity Studios, and we're gonna be talking to you about the upgrade to the undercarriage cleaning kit. The required PSI in gallons per minute, or GPM, for the standard undercarriage cleaning kit is a little bit higher than a lot of people have. And so what we did is we rolled out a new set of nozzles, considered an upgrade kit, to maximize that lower PSI and lower GPM range. So what I'm gonna show you is how to replace these. The instructions are in the box, but some people don't wanna read, so we are doing a video instead. So inside the package, the contents are gonna be a pre-filter, instructions, Teflon tape, in this case we've already wrapped it. You have your four nozzles, which we've already wrapped partially. And the newest addition is going to be a stainless quarter inch female coupler that you'll be able to thread onto the end of your pre-filter like this. And then you don't have to take this plug out, which can be somewhat difficult because it's got strong Loctite on it. So instead, you just put Teflon onto your pre-filter, install your coupler, and then it's a lot easier to do that. And in the example of the pre-filter with or without the coupler, we're gonna show you how to do both of those. Tools you're gonna need are 3 8 socket wrench, a 9 16 socket, and then I also like to use a 9 16 deep well because we're gonna take the plug out as well. We're gonna replace the nozzles first, and then we're gonna move on to the plug. So I take my 3 8 socket wrench, with 9 16 These are gonna be a lot easier to replace because it's just Teflon on here. You're still gonna have only about three threads that are showing once you install the nozzle with the new ones. You don't have to drive them all the way into the bar. It's not necessary. One important piece to notice is that these threads could flake because they're aluminum. Also, there's Teflon tape, and in some cases, a bit of the Loctite can get into the bar, in the channel inside here. So you wanna make sure to blow it out really well because it will clog this little nozzle. So now that we got this one out, I'm gonna pull the rest of these guys out. I always like to save these parts because if you get a bigger washer, you don't wanna overload your pump with a small nozzle. So it's good to keep these just in case. You can see inside here, but there's Teflon tape left in every one of these. So you wanna make sure to clean out those threads as best that you can. And now you're gonna watch me struggle to take out this plug because it's Loctited in. This is gonna be interesting. I think I used a vise last time I did this. And you're gonna brace it. Yeah, there's no way. So if you took the time to watch that sequence, we're now gonna include a quarter inch female coupler that you're gonna wanna thread onto the filter. Don't remove this, leave it in. If you already got it out, use your Teflon to reinstall it. Eesh, it's loud. Then you can clip right in. So you're essentially gonna have the same thing, only instead of having to remove the plug and thread in your pre-filter, you're just gonna put Teflon onto the pre-filter threads, install your coupler, and you can just clip in and go. Since we were able to get the plug off, we're gonna go through with how we originally designed this, which is going to be wrapping this guy. And I'm gonna wrap all four of these since we're wrapping. So left hand holding the fitting, and you're wrapping against it so that when you tighten it, it doesn't bunch up the Teflon four wraps. You're going NPT to NPT. So there's no reason to do more than that. Even though the stock ones come with more, don't do that, you only need four. And we'll keep going. Finally, we're gonna wrap our pre-filter. For those of you who were able to get the plug out, nice work. 
It's a real pain sometimes. There's strong Loctite on there. So it's difficult to get out. But if you got it out, again, you're going NPT to NPT. So this guy is still good to go right in. In this case, you can see there's an arrow. It's pretty self-explanatory in this case because you got threads here and threads here. 9 16 And again, when you're looking at this, you see I've only hand tightened these. Some nozzles will thread a little further than others, but the most important thing is that these nozzle spray patterns, the lines match up straight up and down. If they don't, when they're straight, they shoot like this. But if it's crooked, it's gonna shoot like this. And when it's coming out like this on one side and like this on the other, you're gonna have uneven spray patterns where this one's straight, this one's shooting like this. So make sure your lines always match up. So your spray patterns all line up. So last piece is that you want to tighten down your pre-filter. Does not have to be very tight. It's all MPT. There you go. One thing you should know whenever you're dealing with a bar system like this or anything with additional nozzles installed is that it's a combined orifice size that you're using. So in this case, these nozzles are all a 2.0, 40 degree, which means you multiply 2.0 times four, which gives you eight. Two, four, six, eight. This is an 8.0 orifice. That's like having a really big nozzle on the end of your pressure washer, which means that you're not generating enough back pressure. So there's no pressure coming out. These nozzles, being a 1.3, effectively create more pressure in your system. And by creating more pressure, you're dropping it from an 8.0 down to a 5.2 because you have 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, and 1.3. They're also 65 degree, which means the spray pattern is wider. When you think about the spray pattern coming out, if there's too much overlap, you can get striping because you have overlap of the spray. But with 65 degree, it opens it up a little bit wider. And so there's less likelihood of striping. This is more common with something like a uh, concrete cleaning where it is ingrained debris and dirt in the concrete. On an undercarriage of a vehicle, it's less important. The reason it matters for an undercarriage though for 65 degree is that there's less focused pressure. It's spread out over a wider range, so it's safer for electronics or anything else under the vehicle. And that is how you upgrade your undercarriage kit. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and leave a comment below if you'd like to see some other videos on how-tos with our products. We'll see you soon.